ACA, I have, I have realized the beauty of being Muslim, which I carry on. I know that I don't have to be afraid or ashamed of being Muslim. When different people come up to me at ASU, I can proudly explain my religion. Hopeful enough and faithful enough that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has looked at our hearts and He is going to help us to build the modern Islamic school. We're not there yet, but we're trying really hard. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond. It's the focus of the final four chapters in the new edition of Light Gender Matters. Four of the 12 chapters now. Yes. Look, I've lived in this country all my life. 20 years ago, there used to be a public service announcement who would come on American television at 10 o'clock at night. At 7 o'clock, you know where your pits are. 20 years ago, the dangers, the drugs, and the gangs were out there. And many of us were raised in that era. And so we think, well, it's 10 o'clock, my daughter's home alone in the bedroom, so I'm a good parent. But the challenges have changed. Many American parents want to be their kid's best friend. But a friend isn't there. A friend cannot say, I will not allow you to pick out our ice cream right before supper. That's the parent's job. A friend can't say, I will not allow you to play Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. A friend cannot say that. Only a parent can say that. There's any number of kids out there that can be your kid's best friend, but they cannot be the parent. That's your job. What really matters? What should our highest priority be as parents? Until fairly recently, the answer to that question would have been a guess or not an apparent opinion, but we now have good research that informs the answer to that question. Longitudinal cohort studies in which researchers follow kids from childhood to adolescence into adulthood, looking to see what characteristic in childhood influence and predicts good outcomes in adulthood. Whether you got good grades in school accounts for very little of your eggs. Virtue and character are the act. Character, conscientiousness, self-control. Measured at 12 years of age. How do you measure self-control at 12 years? You don't talk to a kid. You don't do a martial arts test. You talk to the classmates and even the teacher. Those are validated measures of self-control. You ask questions like, can this kid take turns? Can this kid listen to grown-ups and peers? Low self-control. Measured when a kid is 12 years old. The doc predicts a high risk of drug and alcohol use and poor physical health 20 years later. High self-control. Measured at 12 years of age. Predicts low risk of poor physical health and addiction to drugs and alcohol 20 years later. These graphs are in your hand. Low self-control at age 12 predicts a high risk of financial struggles 20 years later. High self-control at age 12 predicts a low risk of financial struggles 20 years later. Low self-control at age 12 predicts a low credit rating 20 years later. High self-control at age 12 predicts a high credit rating 20 years later. What should our highest priority be? It should be to teach virtue and care. That's not a study. That's a robust empirical finding. I devote two chapters of the collapse of parenting to reviewing every relevant longitudinal cohort study, and they all come to the same conclusion. The teaching virtue and character, that's the most important thing for parents to do. And the funny thing is, American parents used to know. American parents used to say things like, hey, I'd rather you get a C on the test of honesty than cheat and get an A. But I now find many American parents who say things like, hey, you want to get them to Stanford? You've got to have incredible grades. You're not just competing against American kids anymore. You're competing against kids from Asia and Europe. You've got to have amazing grades. And there's been an explosion in cheating in the United States over the last 20 years, which I've documented.